Welcome back to Storytime. Today we will be listening to The Patchwork Quilt by Joan Atkin. The Patchwork Quilt by Joan Atkin Far in the north, where the snow falls for 300 days each year, and all the trees are Christmas trees, there was an old lady making patchwork. Her name was Mrs Newt. She had many, many little three-cornered pieces of cloth. Boxes full and baskets full, bags full and bundles full, all the colours of the rainbow. There were red pieces and blue pieces, pink pieces and golden pieces. Some had flowers on, some were plain. Mrs Newt sewed 12 pieces into a star. Then she sewed the stars together to make bigger stars. And then she sewed those stars together. She sewed them with gold thread and silver thread and white thread and black thread. What do you suppose she was making? She was making a quilt for the bed of her little grandson Nils. She had nearly finished. When she had put in the last star, little Nils would have the biggest and brightest and warmest and most beautiful quilt in the whole of the North Country. Perhaps in the world. While his granny sewed, little Nils sat beside her and watched the way her needle flashed in and out of the coloured pieces, making little tiny stitches. Sometimes, he said, Is it nearly done, Granny? He had asked her this question every day for a year. Each time he asked it, Mrs Newt would sing. Moon in cradle, give me your light. Fire in the hearth, burn clear and bright. Needle fly swiftly, thread run fast, until the quilt is done at last. The finest quilt that ever there was, made from more than a thousand stars. This was a magic song, to help her so quickly. While she sang it, little Nils would sit silent on his stool, stroking the bright colours of the quilt. And the fire would stop crackling to listen, and the wind would hush its blowing. Now the quilt was nearly done, it would be ready in time for Nils's birthday. Far, far to the south of Mrs Newt's cottage, in the hot, dry country, where there is no grass and it rains only once every three years. A wizard lives in the desert. His name was Ali Beg. Ali Beg was very lazy. All day he slept in the sun, lying on a magic carpet, while twelve camels stood around it, shading him. At night he went flying on his carpet, but even then the unhappy camels were not allowed to sit down. They had to stand in a square each with a green lamp hanging on a chain around its neck, so that when Ali Beg came home, he could see where he had to land in the dark. The poor camels were tired out and very hungry too, because they never had enough to eat. As well as being unkind to the camels, Ali Beg was a thief. Everything he had was stolen. His clothes, his magic carpet, his camels even the green lights on their necks. They were really traffic lights. Ali Beg had stolen them from the city of Beirut one day as he flew over. So all the traffic had come to a stop. In a box, Ali Beg kept a magic eye which could see all the beautiful things everywhere in the world. Every night he looked into the eye and chose something new to steal. One day, when Ali Beg was lying fast asleep, the eldest of the camels said, 
Ooh, friends, I am faint with hunger, and I must have something to eat. As there is no grass, let us eat this carpet. So they began to nibble the edge of the carpet. It was thick and soft and silky. They nibbled and nibbled. They munched and munched until there was nothing left but the bit under Ali Beg. When he woke up, he was very angry. Wicked camels, I am going to beat you with my umbrella, and you shall have no food for a year. Now I have all the trouble of finding another carpet. Ali Beg took his magic eye out of its box. He said to it, Find me a carpet, magic eye, to carry me far and carry me high. Then he looked into the magic eye to see what he could see. The eye went dark, and then it went bright. What Ali Beg could see then was the kitchen of Mrs. Newt's cottage. There she sat, by her big fireplace, sewing away at the wonderful patchwork quilt. I can see that is a magic quilt, just the thing for me. He jumped on what was left of the magic carpet. He had to sit astride, the way you would sit on a horse, because there was so little left. Carry me carpet, carry me fast, through burning sand and wintry blast. With never a slip and never a tilt, carry me straight to the magic quilt. The piece of carpet carried him up into the air, but it was so small it could not go very fast. In fact, it went so slowly that as it crept along, Ali Beg was burned by the hot sun. Then, when he came into the cold north country where Mrs. Newt lived, he was frozen by the cold. By now, night had fallen. The carpet was going slower and slower and slower, lower and lower and lower. At last it sank down on a mountain top. It was quite worn out. Ali Beg angrily stepped off and walked down the mountain to Mrs. Newt's house. He looked through the window. Little Nils was in bed fast asleep. Tomorrow would be his birthday. Mrs. Newt had sat up late to finish the quilt. There was only one star left to put in, but she had fallen asleep in the chair, with the needle halfway through a patch. Ali Beg softly lifted the latch. He tiptoed in. Very, very gently, so as not to wake Mrs. Newt. He pulled the beautiful red and blue and green and crimson and pink and gold quilt from under her hands. He never noticed the needle. Mrs. Newt never woke up. Ali Beg stole out the door, carrying the quilt. He spread it out on the snow. Even in the moonlight, its colours showed bright. Ali Beg sat down on it. He said, By hill and dale, over forest and foam, carry me safely, carry me home. Old Mrs. Newt had stitched a lot of magic into the quilt as she sewed and sang. It was even better than the carpet. It rose up into the air and carried Ali Beg south towards the hot country. When Mrs. Newt woke and found her beautiful quilt gone, she and little Nils hunted for it everywhere. But it was not in the kitchen, nor in the woodshed, nor in the forest, nowhere. Although it was his birthday, little Nils cried all day. Back in the desert, Ali Beg lay down on the quilt and went to sleep. The camels stood around shading him. The youngest camel said, Ah, friends, I've been thinking, why should we keep the sun off this wicked man while he sleeps on a soft quilt? Let us roll him into the sand and sit on the quilt ourselves. Then we make it take us away and leave him behind. 
three camels took hold of Ali Beg's clothes with their teeth. Then they all sat on it in a ring, round the star-shaped hole in the middle. Luckily, it was a very big quilt. The eldest camel said, Beautiful quilt, so fine and grand. Carry us home to your native land. At once, the quilt rose up in the air with all the camels sitting on it. At that moment, Ali Beg woke. He saw them up above him. With a shout of rage, he jumped up and made a grab for the quilt. His fingers just caught in the star-shaped hole. The quilt sailed along with Ali Beg hanging underneath. The youngest camel said, Friends, let us get rid of Ali Beg. He is too heavy for this quilt. So all the camels humped and bumped and thumped. They knocked and rocked. They slipped and tipped. They wriggled and jiggled until the needle, which Mrs. Newt had left sticking through a patch, ran into Ali Beg's finger. He gave a yell and let go. He fell down and down and down and down until he hit the sea with a great splash. And that was the end of Ali Beg. But the quilt sailed on with the camels. As they flew over Beirut, they threw down the twelve green traffic lights. When at last they landed outside Mrs Newt's house, Nils came running out. Oh, Granny! he cried. Come and see, the quilt has come back and it has brought me twelve camels for a birthday present. Dear me, said Mrs Newt, I shall have to make them jackets or they will find it too cold in these parts. So she made them beautiful patchwork jackets and gave them plenty of hot porridge to eat. The camels were very happy to have found such a kind home. Mrs Newt sewed the last star into the patchwork and spread the quilt on Nils' bed. There, she said, now it's bedtime. Nils jumped into bed and lay proudly under his beautiful quilt. He went straight to sleep and what wonderful dreams he had that night and every night after while his granny sat in front of the big fire with six camels on one side and six camels on the other. Thank you for joining us for story time. Tune in again next week to hear the lovely story of Cinderella. If you would like to make some illustrations of the story, please send them in to us and we will show them along with our story.